your friends aren't doing anything, whatever. But I'm sure behind the scenes, I'm sure everybody was always reaching out and whatever. There was almost like some people that like never really said anything to me like before, but then like later on were kind of like bullying me into like trying to make like decisions for me. Um, there's a lot in that video that was untrue and I feel very confused because this is very similar to a thing we had before where we had to make a choice between something that could possibly hurt Eugenia but thought it was for her best interests and I think right now this video is gonna piss her off I mean she has right now a seemingly beautiful recovery story that I don't want to mess with I don't want to um, make seem negative I would love for everything in that video to have been all the whole truth um, so that it could truly be celebrated but it was I think um, a manipulation and I think potentially I, I don't know if Shane knows the whole story or maybe he does but not the the details potentially and decided to to go along with it because he thought it would help her I think that he has her best interests at heart but the video that he posted was so frustrating and hurtful to me and I have stayed very silent for a long time for fear of her not getting treatment uh, it was communicated to me that if I ever talked about what actually happened that there was a chance that as a result she'd be pulled out of treatment so I never said anything because I was terrified I had a Keemstar on the phone with me trying to get information and I didn't I didn't know what to do um, he <laughs> he he was very understanding and I appreciate that he didn't say anything because I felt like I was gonna ruin that can you guys help me out I don't know the this entire video feels um, it, it's a beautiful story um, but I still feel fear very much for Eugenia um, there's a lot more to the story and to the situation um, you know they glossed over some things that are uh, extremely um, important in Eugenia's real recovery um, and I think that it's important that she um, number one knows that that we care about her um, we were discussed so much <laughs> in this video um, as bullies and brought up as uh, bad people and we had the probably the hardest uh, time of our lives to to help her um, and you know we knew that it was risking our friendship um, to help her and we had to to lie to her I had nightmares I've lost sleep like that we have to explain what we did, but like doing what we did, it, it took a lot out of me. I was, I, I don't know how to, how, how, where to start. The, um, the situation has been, her life has been manipulated for years um, and it's currently still being manipulated right in front of everyone. Yeah, and it's a beautiful story, right? Like it looks like it, watching Shane's video, it, it's such like a happy, feel good, and we should be and happy. It's, it's completely covering all of the shit that yeah. is still there, I think, and could still be a problem. And it, there are still puppet strings right now being pulled that I, I like. There, it's all out there now. I mean, if there's a Shane Dawson video, right, everybody's gonna know um, at least enough to I feel like take the pressure off of me to to keep my mouth shut. Like I, I felt like I had. Like people just like holding a gun at me like and saying if you say anything this this and this could happen and now it's gone and it's down and I can I can be honest and I feel like a dick because I had to lie pretend like I didn't know what was going on um, people constantly harassing me thinking wow you're a shitty friend all of us like you guys are shitty friends because you have this girl in front of you that you're doing nothing for but we were doing everything like um, and the, the thing, one of the things that bothers me the most is that she said they seemed like they didn't care until the, until they were bullies. Um, I, I, I talked to her so many times and she had the same response. I'm, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Like, there's nothing to worry about. And it was very similar to what you would see uh, her, her reactions be in live streams when people would ask her, you know, are you okay? It, it was always, yeah, I'm fine. And it was also the exact same 
communication that would happen whenever police would come to her house, which is a very real thing. And many people on the internet were calling the police. We were calling the police. Um, and there's a lot of uh, red tape on, on that. But when they would answer the door and they had a script and they would turn the police away. And this video with Shane is another example of a script and the police or Shane in this situation walking away feeling that that person is fine. And I don't, I don't know if that's the truth. I mean, I, I hope so. Yeah, I know that. Um, I know I've tried to talk to her before. Uh, I know you've tried to talk to her before. There's been many incidents where um, we would, I would either send a text or I'm sure I asked her in person at some point. And well, we did at at Jesse's birthday party. Yeah. So we we would get the same response. Um, and it was difficult to see, like, someone that was so sweet, like, deteriorating in front of your eyes, and that there was nothing you could do about it, because they wouldn't open up. And granted, I understand, it's, it's a very difficult thing to go through, and like, I struggled with an eating disorder for years, and still do, and uh, to an extent, I understand how she feels, but... We were basically, like, blocked out from her brain when we would ask if she was okay. And that was just her defense mechanism, whether she realized maybe she had a problem at the time or she just didn't want to talk about it. But we tried um, a lot. And we were eventually forced to have to take drastic measures. Um, and that is where I think she's referring to it as bullying. Um, in our uh, defense, it was purely with love, and it was purely to help save one of the most beautiful people we've ever met. Um, I'll let the Harley Davidson pass. Um, we had. Do we tell the details? I think we okay, might have to. Okay. Well, first of all, I. I don't know how to feel about some of the things in the video, like. Because I know Katie, um, I I know Katie Morton. I've reached out to her. I have emails with her explaining the situation I was in with Eugenia because I wanted to help her. I tried calling the police. They kind of laughed at me on the phone. They're like, oh yeah, that YouTube girl, like we've been there. There's nothing we can do. We're not mental health professionals. We can't take her. Um, I called mental health professionals and there was nothing they could do because they weren't law enforcement and they could not forcibly enter a home without permission, which is not something that anyone in that household was going to give. So the only thing that I could do, and this was discussed with Katie in emails, so she knows who I am, she knows what we were planning on, so the, the video with Shane is confusing to me that that, that seemed to be missing, the, um, that no one, you know, understood that like there were so many things going on that were toxic in that household that I explained in detail and, and it, it was just glossed over like it's it, maybe they don't think it's a real problem or they don't know the extent of what happened but um, the conclusion was that the only thing that I could do was if I had her out of her house and in, into my apartment or into some other area where the mental health professionals could come and talk to her and that I would legally be able to let them into my own place. So we had been trying to hang out with Eugenia for a long time. It was very difficult to get a hold of her to spend time with her. Um, if people made videos about her online or if there was drama surrounding her and negative attention was brought her way, she would become m more hidden from the world. She wouldn't want to talk to people as much and it was very difficult to get to hang out with her. So which that's why Ugh, that's why in this like, situation we were trying to plan this thing, I was reaching out to people, begging people to stop bringing attention to her because it was it, it, it could have ruined everything. Um, we and, needed her to hang out with us. And, and she wouldn't leave her house. And finally we got her to leave her house. It was the day after the Super Bowl. That's all I remember because we tried to get her to hang out on the Super Bowl and other days. It was the day after the Super Bowl. I I did lie to her. I, I lied to her. We all kind of did. We we pretended we were going to go to an escape room, which is a thing that we would regularly do. So it seemed believable to her her and her mom. Specifically her mom. Yeah. Um, so I, like, 
took screenshots of like pretending that I had, I had gotten tickets and things and I we had a group chat going and um, I felt like an asshole. We all kind of did being like, we're so excited to go to the escape room. Um, and she came over and we sat her down and we talked to her and it was pretty clear that she had no intention of getting any kind of help. Like she said, maybe I'll go see a doctor in like months from now. Yeah, it was like three months um, later she was going to be heading home to Connecticut. Um, and she would be willing to see a doctor then. Um, <laughs> so we had we had to arrange a lot of stuff in advance of this day. Um, this is an intervention. We it was heart wrenching. Um, but what we had to do, um, we spoke with her, and she she for the first time ever in her life admitted that Tell there us. might have been a problem. And that in a few months she would see a doctor, but at this point, maybe she was honestly on the the brink of death. And uh, we, uh, I mean, we, I tried the, the the soft approach. We tried everything. Like it was it didn't work, and I I, I felt desperate. I we felt also like tried police to her house. I, I we we did it like I didn't have any anything else. Like I I I was scared. Um, so we we did an intervention and the mental health professionals showed up um so it was the los angeles psychiatric evaluation team it's a, showed a up pet yeah and uh they and they came in and um they interviewed her they asked her questions we left the room for we, that part we mm -hmm. left the room just for privacy of we, we wanted her to open up and be honest with them yeah because those are real questions that they have to ask um and personal so like she could have it, uh, they, it was up to them at this point what happened to her like they could have walked away and said everything is fine but they were they were like really concerned um so they ended up deciding that they wanted to take her into care and they ordered something called a 5150 and it, it's mandatory they, it's they take you involuntary without hold. yeah um at at which point like god like she tried to like at, this once, was the most traumatic situation I've ever been in my entire life. Once they decided that they were going to commit her legally, she was unable to leave. Like, the police were on their way because she was on the phone with her mom, who was screaming at me, by the way. She verbatim called me a fucking bitch for doing what I was doing. Um, how, how could a friend do this, I believe, to, to her, her friends? And, I mean... I don't know if you want to share more on it. It was really messed up. She called the cops on me and tried to have me arrested for kidnapping. Correct. So when Eugenia was trying to leave, we had two sets of cops show up. One to take her into care and one to arrest me for kidnapping. Clearly, they talked it out and it was, it was obviously fine. Um, but, like, the, oh, God, the, and then Edgar, like... Okay, so there's a lot of a backstory with the mom... Um, Eugenia is an adult. She's, I believe, 24, 25 years old. She's never allowed to go anywhere. Um, it's all completely manipulated uh, by the mother. Um, there is a driver, uh, Edgar. Every hangout with friends really. is an orchestrated pickup and drop off um, by Edgar, who waits outside. Um, and in this situation, when um, Eugenia called her mom and her mom was furious, um, Edgar came into the apartment and was banging on the door. Um, he, like, followed me into my apartment. Because eh. I, I had to go out and I had to tell the, the mental health professionals that she was trying to leave. Um, and he, like, followed me into my apartment and was screaming at me. He started banging on all of my neighbor's doors until he finally got to mine and figured out where my apartment was. And uh, he's, like, banging on the door. I was, I was terrified. Like, this was a big guy... He was screaming. Um, These were not people looking out for Eugenia's best interest. These are people looking for some form of uh, gain and manipulation in a way that this video, the Shane video that came out today, completely glosses over the real problems and makes us completely worried that she's not okay. Um, the just, mom was discussed in this video as just going back and forth. They were always together, so it's difficult to imagine a scenario in which her mother wasn't watching every every move but her the lawyer was there correct the lawyer was there the whole time um by the way is also my lawyer and has been he, he texted me a couple days ago to give me an update after months like i i don't know it just i don't i don't know how to feel i just this whole thing to me feels like they are 
taking someone like Shane, who clearly is good at shining a positive light on people who m might not... <sighs> I don't even know how to word this. I just feel like, yeah, Eugenia is a great person. I, I love her. I care about her. Um, but the people surrounding her in her life, I feel like, are dangerous. And I think that they were aware of Shane's potential to cover their tracks and make this look like some kind of beautiful recovery story that everyone was in on and rooting for and it wasn't it couldn't be further from the truth i had to fight them so hard to get her into care and i'm now viewed as like a bully we're bullies i don't the way her mom screamed at jacqueline on the phone it was terrifying uh was the biggest red flag of somebody who um was killing their daughter it was fucked up yeah uh, no mother should fight a daughter failing a psychiatric evaluation and needing to be taken into care. Um, that I just don't know how if I had a daughter that I would let it get that far without doing something myself. She hadn't been to a doctor in five years. How does that happen? Five years. Um, anyways, uh, this video is really hard to make and we... You know, the Shane video, it gives us a whirlwind of emotions, and um, we needed, we all instantly spoke with each other and realized we were all because feeling the same stress. We were there for the intervention. I mean, it was the four of us. It was, and Frank, and we, we had to, like, it, 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 to, to even get to the point of, of wanting to sit down and have something so serious happen with someone that you care about is hard. Like, yes, it was the right thing to do. But it, deciding to do that, like, we knew, like, that was the end of our friendship with her. Mm -hmm. And we had to make that choice. It was basically watch her deteriorate and possibly not make it to be able to get help or ruin a friendship and eventually see her, her do better. And it's, it's difficult because it's like, well, you know this person's gonna hate you. And I understand, like, she feels betrayed and hurt and, like seeing her like you know walk away and say like she felt so hurt and like didn't understand really why we were doing it that way like i have like nightmares it's it's so sad to see someone so hurt and so far gone that that, that was like the only option we thought that we had um we had looked for months trying to figure out what to do, and especially you, um, Jacqueline, oh. um, did a lot of the research and looked into a lot and worked really hard to find a solution to help our friend. Um, it was hard because when we would reach out and she would shut down, what else are you supposed to say to someone? You can't force it out of them. And we what we did was... I mean... It's the only option. It's the only thing that we thought that we could do. We were also fearful that if we were too in her face about it before, that, that her mom would. would not have let her continue to hang out with us. Yes. And I was terrified of that. Like, and I was walking a fine line the, the entire time. Eggshells. Yeah. So at that point, we decided to... to to do the intervention and, and, and understand that it would hurt her and that we would have to watch her um, and it, it <sighs> this video feels very much like the struggle of knowing that we're gonna have to hurt her for her best interest and I know she's gonna be pissed and I, I maybe other people will will be pissed too I don't I never know what to expect I hope she's all recovering. I know is that I'm doing what I think is right in and not letting a lie persist that this was something that was decided on or, or even supported by her family like it wasn't it wasn't i had to fight them and she's still with them and this shane dawson show or the the, the video it, it paints them in a very positive light and that is scary to me because i know what it's really like and she's still there it just uh, is concerning that she's 
that old, she's an adult, um, and there's really, from our knowledge, been no or not much of an effort for her to have gone to get help. Um, and as an adult, you can't sign someone into a inpatient um, facility, a hospital, you can't force them to do anything, which is why the 5150 was necessary. Um, it's just like... Mm. It's a tough, it's a tough situation. We're feeling all <clears throat> conflicting emotions. And because it's, it's not like, we're not angry, like, it's not like we don't want to make anyone um, upset or mad. This is more so just us explaining um, sort of a backstory almost and like... The real truth. What we... Yeah, I'm still scared. To like, do to and this, this also, this, like, yeah, this could... We, we, it's important that she gets out of a dangerous situation. I want her to, to I want to have a real story to be told. Not We're told. I want, I want a real recovery story. And if, if she is truly, I know that she spent time, like she spent time after she was, after she was released, she did have the choice to leave and it was continued, which is amazing. Um, but this was after, like, I, I'm sure doctors and psychologists and, uh, that had to, to tell her, like, this is your blood work, you're in a dangerous area right now, and this is, I don't know that it was maybe explained like that before, so I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that it continued, and, and I, I do, I hope, I hope she's really in a better place, but I know that there are a lot of things that it might point to not being and the case. And the real truth is important to, to get out there. I mean, even to help other people, it's not as pretty as it was painted. Yeah, sometimes people don't just decide to get help after that much time doing what you're doing, being around people telling you that you're fine. She did not decide that. She didn't decide. She fought for As friends, we had to we had to do something so uncomfortable and traumatic and, and, and force her to do this. And I don't regret it. And I'm not sorry. I don't care if I'm viewed as a bully. And... I think people should know that you you might have to do that in your life and you might have to risk a friendship and you might have to be painted as the bad guy um, but do it I mean I've personally been 5150 if that's what you want to call it when I was younger um, similar things um, and looking back on it now years ago um, I hated my family for doing that I didn't want anything to do with them because I felt betrayed. I felt like the trust that I may have had for them, um, whether they approached me in a different manner was gone. But if that hadn't been done, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. So it's, it's like you have to make difficult decisions. I can't even talk. Um, sometimes for the better good of someone. And if you disagree with what we did, that's your opinion, but if you were in our situation and it was a friend, not just someone you follow online that you have, you know, hung out with and you care about deeply, what would you have done? Just sit and done nothing? Like, we couldn't anymore because we just kept seeing her get thinner and we were scared. Like. What else could we have done? Yep. I don't know what else to say. I think that's it. I don't know. I just... I want her to be happy. I want her to recover. I want her to be healthy. I feel horrible that we hurt her so much. But I'd rather her be alive. And hate me. And not. We love you, Eugenia.